Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What instantly ages someone? Grief. Nothing ages you like grief. My mom died less than two months ago. One symptoms I was not expecting was the physical aches and pains associated with grief. Oh and the fatigue can be brutal. I'm only 35 but I feel much older physically. Mentally been there for some time throughout her 16 year illness, being a caregiver for part of that time. I was also a caretaker for both my parents. I'm also 35 and feel more like 95. My whole immediate family is now deceased. Stress. When I was younger and first entered the real world I remember working with a white-haired woman. That had an always tired look about her. She had a picture of her daughter on her desk. Young. Blonde. That looked so incredibly much like her I mentioned it once. Turned out that wasn't her daughter, but was her prior to her going through the FBI Academy. Why would someone have a photo of themselves on the desk? Lack of sleep. That's why it's called beauty sleep. Must be why I'm so ugly. Back pain. You can't move like a young person if your back hurts. I had a breast reduction almost five years ago and I feel younger now. At 30. Than I did at 18. A hearty FCK you to every doctor that ever told me to, just try yoga or Pilates. I have a cousin who has huge breasts and she's always having back issues she's over 50 now can't. Remember her exact age but I never thought about reduction helping out with your back. Would you recommend it to someone over 50 who has had issues for over 35 years? Or is the damage done? I was gonna say the way you dress but it went real dark in the comments skull. I was about to type, wrong hair color, loudly crying. Right, I scrolled past a comment that literally just says, death of a child, and, war. Holy fuck, I was gonna say, puffy eyes. Night shifts in the emergency department. Edit. Wow, this comment really blew up. It got more upvotes than a picture of my cat. There's too many replies to answer individually. But I'll try explaining a few things here. A lot of folks said how they enjoy working in ER and how it's almost rejuvenating for them. Don't get me wrong, ER can be thrilling, it can give you energy. That can really be true when you have a good team behind you. Good working conditions and a functional hospital and healthcare system. Having said that, things that were stressful for me were mostly when you feel powerless in tough situations. When we would keep getting more and more patients and simply didn't have enough beds in the hospital. So the specialist had to call all of the departments and asking for personal favors to admit a seriously ill patient. Stuff like that happened all the time and those were the things that drain you. Personally, I was working regular -er during my internship. Now I am a specialist of child and adolescent psychiatry. During my five-year residency, I regularly worked in the psych emergency which was less crowded than regular -er. I could often get a few hours of sleep in. But in such departments, things are interesting as far as workload. You don't get the next or previous day off, which means that you start your regular shift on Monday morning 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Start night shift from 4 p.m. Monday till 8 a.m. Tuesday and then have your regular Tuesday shift from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. If you're on during the weekend, you come in Sunday at 8 a.m. and you're the on MD till Monday 8 a.m. and then, enjoy, your regular Monday 8 to 4. Fun times. Sure, the extra money comes in really handy, but I'm not sure it's worth it. The last six months I didn't have to do these shifts and honestly, I don't really miss them. So yeah, they can fun and active and you do a lot interesting things. But there are many ifs to make that a sustainable way of life. Night shifts in general. Lack of sleep in general. <laughs> FK in cancer. Have watched my brother-in-law age 30 years in a month. I have been a witness to this many times. 30 years in a month is an accurate measurement. It but the last 20 years happens in like 3 days if it's towards the end. My aunt was 40 and sitting next to my 97-year-old great-grandmother you could easily tell which one was gonna live to be 100. <laughs> Troubleshooting printer problems. I swear these devilish machines only exist to trigger me to smithereens. A couple years ago I decided to officially give up on having a personal printer and only use the one at the library because when it fucks up, it's someone else's problem. I still have my old printer and I've considered dropping it off my roof for fun. I had the opportunity to throw one out of a third-story window. The absolute joy I felt watching that asshole machine soar through the air and smash to smithereens was the best kind of natural high. It's been 15 years and I still get goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> Meth and alcohol. Read it as math and alcohol, exam trauma triggered. Math, not even once. 20 out of 20 of the people that live in the meth house next door would agree. I see young people get sucked in. They come around all nice and young, then after a while their car is gone but they're still there. Within a year not only do they age, but their body composition, gait, and posture are all well aged. Hair loss. Not me personally but I used to work with a guy who I swore was like 35, and he was 19. Poor kid. When I have an interview, I let my baldness show a little bit. I look older, and I'm taken more seriously by recruiters that way. 
I have the same strategy but with glasses. People assume you're smarter if you're wearing glasses. Little do they know. Death of a child. War. Edit. I may have opened up an avenue to share pain through my comment and want anyone who is feeling grief that you can DM me whether it be the loss of a loved one or through the ravages of war. I am sincerely praying for those grieving tonight and sending virtual hugs. I just lost my 25-year-old son a few weeks ago. I feel like I'm not really living in the same reality anymore. My whole existence is punctuated every few minutes by thoughts, feelings, regrets, and utter sorrow for a loss I never anticipated would happen. The only consolation for me these days is that it's no longer every few seconds that I feel this profound grief. I am very sorry for your loss. Parents are not supposed to bury their children. I am sending virtual hugs and prayers. Grief sucks and it is compounded for the death of a child. I witnessed the aftermath of that. I lost my best friend at 17 after a long battle with leukemia. And to this day, I still think about him. But his mother isn't the same as she used to be. She has recovered a lot. But it's evident that it took a significant toll on her. Lost my best friend in a car wreck at 16. My life has never been the same since. I experienced such grief that it touched me every day of the rest of the next 40 years. I carry him with me always.